You know, we've been having fun graphing all sorts of functions. And I want us to notice that functions actually have interesting moments when you look at their, their graphs. Right, the graphs have these interesting turning points sometimes where things, the action changes. It's going down, then all of a sudden it's going up. Well, that turning point is an example of what's called a maximum or minimum. Maxima or minima. Um, this is an example of a minimum because notice that it is the absolute lowest value that a function takes on. But really, we can talk about minima that are kind of local. And a local minima is when it's just the lowest value that the function takes on just over a little teeny range. So for example, if you look really closely, you can see that in fact you see over, over this range right here, I don't care what happens outside here, just in this little region, that is the lowest point. So we call that a local minimum or a, a, a local min. Now you can imagine max and mins of all sorts of pictures. Here's a function. I think it might be a cubic function, in fact. Is there a, a max or min? Well, notice that it keeps getting larger and larger and larger without bound. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller without bound. And there's a little teeny, almost like a kink here. But if you zoom in, you'll see never is that point the largest or the smallest point in any tiny little region. It's always climbing up. It kind of maybe stabilizes for a second, but it keeps climbing up. And so in fact, this is an example of a, a graph for which there is no maximum or minimum, no max or min here. What about this one? What do you think about this? Well, this is a function that's actually associated with the absolute value, but who cares about it? Let's just look at its graph. What do you think? Well, this point looks like a high point. That's actually an example of a, a maxima. And you can see that because in a little teeny region around it, that is the highest peak. That is the top of the summit. And that means that it's a maximum. I don't care what happens outside of here or outside of here. If in a little region it's the highest, then it's a max. So that's a local max. Look at this crazy function. I love this. This is like a sinusoidal function. It goes up and down, up and down. It's kind of like life. It has its ups and downs. And what do you notice here? Well, here what you notice is that there seem to be these peaks here. And so there's a max here, and there's a max here, and a max here, and so forth. And then there's mins, too. So this has maxes and mins. And if you actually want to give the numerical value, you can just read off the, the, the graph. You could have done that on all the previous ones, too. Here, for example, you can see that the maximum value is 3. So this has a, a local maximum at 3, in fact, several times. And it also has a local minimum at negative 3. So you can actually read off and see what that minimum value is or that maximum value, and that will actually tell you what the minimum maximum value is. I want to do one more example, even though I don't have it written down, just because I really just think you're great. You deserve it. You know what? You deserve an extra example. I'm sorry. You do. So let me draw you a quick picture and check it out. Tell me what you think about this picture. Wow. Now, let me just plot this point right here for you. OK. Now, check it out. Does this have a minimum or maximum value? Well, you, you could imagine uh, someone saying, well, this goes up, up, up forever, and goes down, down, down forever. So the answer is no. But remember, we're looking locally. We're looking locally under a magnifying glass. And if you look right around here, you see that in a little teeny region, that, in fact, is right, as big as it gets. And so there is a maximum, a, a, a local maximum at 3. And what about a minimum? I know it goes on forever and goes to negative infinity. But what about over here? Locally, that is a, a point where water would accumulate if you dropped water in there. So that's actually a local minimum, and it happens at negative 6. So you can actually see examples where, in fact, even though the function goes on forever in both directions, locally there could be a max or, or a min. And so that's an important thing to notice. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to consider um, an example where I give you the function. So here's a function that's very similar to that last one, but here's the exact value. The function is f of x equals 1 half x cubed minus 3x plus 4. Here's the graph. And I just want you to see if you can just kind of read off where that, that minimum value occurs. You can see it looks like to find it, we'd have to find the x value, right? And the x value seems like 
it's around negative one and a half-ish or something, or maybe it's not quite a half, right? Maybe it's like one point, negative 1.4 or something. And then over here, it seems like it's around 1.4-ish. We could take those values and plug them into the function to find that local maximum or minimum value. And you could actually do that. If you do that, if you plug in uh, negative 1.4, into this function for x, and you actually use a calculator and figure it out, you'll see you get around 6.8. So roughly speaking, around 6.8, which is kind of close, right? Here's 4, 5, 6, that's 7, so 6.8, that looks about right. That looks like there's a local min, local max around um, there at a height of 6.8, located at x equals negative 1.4. And then a local min seems to be happening at around 1.4, and if you plug that into this for x and satisfy, you know, solve that within a calculator, you get around 1.2, which makes about sense, right? There's 1, there's 2, it's about 1.2. It's right kind of low down there, just above 1. And that's a local min. So we get a local minimum value of around 1.2, a local maximum value of around 6.8, and we know their, their locations. You can actually do this, by the way, using a graphing calculator. And what you can do is you could just, first of all, type in this function into the graphing calculator, and you'd actually get a graph. This is what it would look like. I, you can't see the screen here, but that's what it would look like if you graphed it. And then you could actually just pick some values nearby and see what the value is. So for example, here I just selected, you can see there's, the, there's how the function looks like when you type it in onto a graphing calculator. And I just selected a, a, an x value of negative 1.38, da, 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 and you can see that it gives me the uh, absolute uh, height there, which is 6.82 something, and that's the exact uh, absolute height. And so, for example, if you uh, plugged in and found the, the minimum value, it would be at 1.38. So our guess of 1.4, actually, just visually on the graph, is pretty darn good. And the actual minimum value is 1.1. 1 .1 seven something and so forth and so uh, pretty good, pretty good. Anyway, thinking about these issues of max and mins allows us to get an even more refined sense of the graphs associated with functions. And in fact, calculus will allow us to figure out exactly where those are without cheating and doing numerics with a calculator. But that is for another day. Enjoy thinking about max mins and I'll see you soon.